Today, my presentation is about the uh, overview of domestic and international agri-food e-commerce. Um, my name is Ta uh, Fan Chen Tai. I am associated with International uh, Digital E-Commerce uh, Research Division of uh, Commerce Development Research Institute. We are a government-sponsored think tank. Um, our specialization is uh, uh, international uh, digital commerce, of course. And then uh, also uh, we have a team focused on uh, e-commerce and e-commerce business models. All right. Today, my presentation is also going to cover four parts. The first is the overview of Taiwan and international agri-food e-commerce. And then we move on to the impact of COVID-19. We'll discuss how the pandemic affects the uh, channel and also the uh, selling channel of the agri-food uh, product. And uh, the third part, uh, we are going to review and go back to uh, review a bit about the um, evolution of agri-food distribution channel. And then uh, in the last, we'll discuss um, at this point, the implication and also suggestion uh, for the agri-food e-commerce to develop in the future. All right, and then um, uh, uh, the overview of the market. Uh, this is, uh, we will cover the first, uh, then uh, uh, the, the Taiwan part. Um, this is a survey done before the uh, uh, pandemic, before COVID-19 in 2020. Uh, you can see that in Taiwan, even before uh, COVID-19, uh, the uh, agri-food or fresh food sales in uh, modern channel, uh, uh, the, the, the growth rate uh, uh, in 2020 compared with uh, 2018. Uh, you always see that uh, e-commerce, uh, although the percentage is low, it's only about uh, 8% at 2020, but it compared with uh, 2018, it's already enjoyed 80% very high uh, growth rate. So the e-commerce for agri-food uh, uh, is uh, 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 grow rapidly even before COVID-19. And then uh, at that time, uh, the Taiwanese uh, consumers uh, express the top three worries when they buy uh, fresh food online. The top three worry is the threat. The number one is freshness. Uh, and the, uh, the number two is uh, cannot see the actual product. Actually, number one worry and number two worry are uh, practically the same because uh, we can consumers cannot see the actual uh, agri food product on the website. So uh, they, they only see the picture. So uh, they, they cannot judge the quality of the food uh, by the picture. So that's why uh, that, that's the top one and top two, uh, two worries uh, for the, um, when buying the fresh food online. And the, sec uh, the third one is the shipping cost. And then uh, this is, uh, uh, how what Taiwan uh, uh, markets before uh, COVID nineteen, and then uh, we see that uh, currently now um, the world uh, already uh, have a very uh, high percentage on the uh, uh, ordinary grocery via online. Uh, that is uh, after the COVID nineteen, we already see that uh, worldwide consumers, uh, host household already get used to buying um, uh, agri-food online. And then this is uh, at this year's uh, beginning. Uh, the number is already 28.3% uh, uh, percentage of all the consumers who, uh, worldwide uh, order groceries online at least once a week. And then uh, uh, with all the uh, uh, products uh, categories, consumer product categories, you see that um, in the red uh, uh, framework, yeah, the highlight, you will see that the food category actually enjoy a 38% uh, year on year change growth. So that all among all the categories, the, the food category enjoy the highest growth uh, uh, in e-commerce. And then uh, this chart shows you the, uh, the worldwide uh, average uh, is in the middle the worldwide average uh, the consumer uh, goods uh, the 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 spending 
uh, each year. And then you will see that Taiwan on the weekly online grocery purchase is among uh, its a uh, uh, ranked uh, top uh, top seven, uh, top top five top six uh, uh, with Malaysia. It's about a thirty four point seven percentage. Uh, all the consumers buy uh, grocery online each week. It's uh, way above um, worldwide average. Okay, and then uh, this con this this uh, this uh, survey these numbers are all uh, I uh, use. Uh, we are social uh, uh, the, a a uh, internet uh, consultant agency. They conduct this uh, uh, internet survey. Uh, um, among uh, over 150 countries worldwide, um, I use this uh, number because it's um, it's on the same uh, methodology and also standard, and then so that's why we can that that's how we can uh, compare across countries. And then uh, among all those grocery buyers, you will see that the young adult uh, uh, age uh, between 25 and 34. And also, uh, families with young children, uh, uh, age twenty-five to forty-four. These are the two main uh, heavy users uh, for ordering online grocery. And then we, this is worldwide, but we also see uh, the same numbers in Taiwan. Uh, it's about the same. And also, um, one thing that note. Uh, worthwhile noticing is that the delivery service uh, during the uh, COVID-19 continue to grow. And so we have a lot of uh, families order food uh, over delivery service. So you will see that the delivery service uh, 2021 compared with uh, 2020, uh, this year compared with 2021, you will see that almost 20% growth rate on the delivery service. Okay, so uh, that is the the Taiwan's uh, market and also the worldwide number before and after uh, COVID nineteen. And so, what is uh, what is exactly the impact of COVID nineteen over fresh food uh, market? So, oh, let's see the U.S. This is the the number come from the U.S. Commerce Ministry. Um, the in the U.S., uh, you will see that the, this is the the number of total revenue, uh, retail revenue, uh, before and after COVID nineteen. You will see that uh, during the outbreak, uh, the, in the middle is during the outbreak uh, of um, uh, COVID nineteen in uh, twenty twenty amount uh, about uh, uh, April and uh, May. This is the the. A uh, big lockdown of all the big cities in New York, in Los Angeles, etc. So you will see the uh, the total revenue, uh, retail revenue slump uh, during the big lockdown. But then after the lockdown, the, uh, the 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 retail go back to its normal standard. And then during this uh, big lockdown, you will see uh, all the. Uh, uh, retail uh, revenue uh, go down, but at the same time, about the uh, 2020 in May and April, uh, you will see the at the same time the fresh food online spending uh, goes up very deeply. So that that is why uh, we say that when the uh, when the people cannot go out to shop, they uh, turn their order online, and then. You will see as the lockdown uh, is removed, uh, the uh, the growth rate of uh, ordering fresh food online is uh, decreasing, and then uh, you will see that in 2021, when uh, all the uh, all the restrictions are lifted, uh, you will see all the uh, uh, fresh food uh, online sales start to. Uh, uh, start to uh, decrease. Okay, and then uh, this chart uh, actually uh, is a, uh, a forecast of a um, uh, uh, consultant agency. 
this forecast shows that the, the, the blue forecast is a, a forecast that uh, uh, done before uh, COVID-19, pre-COVID-19 forecast. So the blue dot, the blue lines shows uh, uh, the, the pe what people see about the fresh food, the e-commerce before COVID-19. And the yellow uh, line is the how people see the growth of uh, uh, grocery e-commerce sales after COVID-19. So you will see that the discrepancy, the, the uh, orange uh, arrow shows, the discrepancy, discrepancy is, uh, how the COVID-19 affect uh, the uh, grocery e-commerce sales because all the people, all the agencies worldwide, uh, almost all uh, lifted or, or uh, increased their forecast uh, on the uh, growth of uh, the online uh, grocery sales. Okay, and this is how uh, what happened in the U.S. Uh, this is the U.S. consumers shop. Uh, for agri food online, actually, uh, um, uh, when we talk about e-commerce in the uh, United States, people talk about Amazon. But uh, but uh, but uh, contrary to our um, knowledge, uh, actually, at the in the agri food online sales, very little part comes from Amazon. You can see that only like uh, uh, five percent or three uh, percent uh of all the uh online sales comes from amazon the majority of the agri food online sales come from the brick and mortar the the actual uh, retail chains like walmart or target and this uh or costco and that uh they are the, the web store of these uh brick and mortar uh stores and uh why it's because that uh, I, I think that the, the reason why is uh, 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 has something to do with the sourcing power. Uh, all the fresh food uh, products are people used to. Uh, people are used to buying this product in Costco, in Walmart, uh, uh, in Amazon. Uh, all these uh, fresh food products are not very. Um, um, uh, they don't cover the full of uh, the full spectrum of all the uh, supply, so that's why uh, still people uh, are used to uh, and continue to buy from the uh, stores that they recognize and also uh, um, used to uh, uh, shop from. That, that's what happened in the U.S. And then, uh, the, the, we, we, then uh, the next part we uh, cover the uh, SEA, the Southeast Asia. Uh, you will see on these uh, numbers that this is uh, in the in the left part is uh, the SEA as a whole, and then you will see the individual country number uh, in the right. You will see Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. So you will see all the uh, online, uh, all the consumers say that online is their most purchased channel, the percentage. And then you see the, the uh, during the past few years, uh, the, uh, they, they, the, the number say that uh, on, they, they shop frequent, most frequently online has been grow, uh, doubled or uh, about, uh, uh, all about all uh, on the average uh, about forty five percent as a, a total in uh, Southeast Asia. Forty five percent of all the consumers uh, say that online is their most purchased channel, and that's almost half already. So I say that the online has become the mainstream uh, channel for uh, per, uh, for shopping. And then uh, among all these uh, among all these. Uh, 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 of course, uh, all, all these countries, you will see that uh, all the uh, on the all the all the category, you will see groceries enjoy the highest growth rate on the uh, on the right part, uh, almost triple uh, compared with um, uh, almost triple uh, compared with uh, last year, and then. Uh, although you see that the uh, the base is very low, it's only like two percent. Uh, and, and grocery, but uh, the the growth uh, 
the growth rate is uh, the highest. And and then you see that uh, the it, this this is the research. Uh, the number shows that the uh, uh, grocery fresh food product uh, is actually list number one uh, category that uh, the consumers try for the first time in the last three months. So it's the newest hit of all the online shopping uh, categories. And then the top reason why to switch the spending to online is COVID-19, of course. So uh, the reason why grocery uh, comes so late but it's it already been the top uh, growth uh, product uh, category in uh, uh, Southeast Asia. It has something to do with the infrastructure, uh, because in these a uh, in these areas, uh, the cold storage, uh, the uh, cold uh, the cold chain stores and all the cold storage shipping is not very mature. So uh, in the past, before COVID nineteen. Consumers in uh, Southeast Asia don't have that option to buy fresh food online. So you will see that COVID-19 is sort of like a forcing uh, a factor that force the uh, suppliers or the supermarket to offer their uh, groceries online. So that's why uh, you will see that the, the, the growth comes very late, but uh, it has a lot uh, enormous need uh, in this area. So, uh, of course, uh, logically, uh, after COVID-19, you will see food is expected to remain online even after COVID-19. It's actually a, 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 a the highest one and all, among all the categories you will see food is uh, almost 80, 82% of all the consumers say that they will continue to buy online after COVID-19. Um, uh, that's because, of course, uh, if uh, during the COVID-19, the infra infrastructure is also already in place. Um, it's uh, before COVID-19, the fresh food uh, online sales is percentage is very low in uh, uh, Southeast Asia. It's not because they are, they are not they are not uh, not because consumers don't need them. It's because they cannot buy it online. But since COVID-19 has all the infrastructure uh, for the cold storage, for the uh, fresh food online sales channel already in place, uh, consumers are expected to continue their purchase after COVID-19. And also um, in Southeast Asia, the, um, um, the, the air pollution and also the traffic uh, condition is not very good. So actually go out for shopping is Usually, uh, normally, is not a uh, pleasure for consumers there. So, if um, uh, if they can buy those uh, 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 daily supplies over online, um, that would be ideal for the consumers there. So, you see the number is high. Uh, it's not like uh, in the U.S. Like what we see in the previous slide in the U.S. Uh, the online store, on, online uh, fresh food growth uh, is uh, decreasing after the lockdown. But in the Southeast Asia, uh, a majority of the consumer will continue to buy online after COVID-19. And then we move, move on to China. Uh, this is uh, uh, the the uh, the, the ordering of agri-food uh, from e-commerce app uh, before and after the uh, outbreak. So you will see the, um, the uh, uh, similar to uh, Southeast Asia, the, uh, the use of uh, e-commerce as a channel to buy agri-food will continue to um, stay or to continue to use that app even after the outbreak. And then this is in China, the um, age distribu distribution of uh, uh, agri-food e-commerce users in 2021. Uh, similar with the worldwide uh, average we see in the previous slide, the young adults and also the family with small kids are the two heavy users 
uh, in uh, e-commerce in terms of buying up with food. Okay, so uh, we've covered uh, the overview of the fresh food market and also the impact of COVID-19 on the uh, consumer shopping behavior. Now we move on to a little bit review the history of evolution of agri-food distribution channel. Um, before that, uh, I, I want to discuss a little bit about the characters of the consumer characters when buying the agri food. Uh, the, mo uh, the, the number one most distinguished character is consumers prefer to see the real product when they buy the agri food. As we talk about the top three warrior worries that uh, Taiwanese consumer express when they buy fresh food online, they say that the number one uh, worry is that they cannot see the real food, uh, the real product, so that they cannot judge the quality of the product. So the reason why uh, consumers want to see the real product is uh, only by looking at the real product, they can judge the quality, the freshness of the product. So this is very different from uh, when you shop the uh, household, other household products like clothes or furniture uh, in the fresh food, you want the real product. And uh, the number two um, character when buying fresh food product is uh, you, uh, you sell them, consumers sell them uh, by only one kind of product. They want a basket. So uh, when, when it comes to fresh food product, a normal household will consume like fruits, vegetables, uh, rice, uh, fish, and uh, other things, uh, uh, dairy product a, a lot. So it's a variety assumption. Uh, consumers are looking for a place that can do one-stop one shopping for all the fresh food that they need to uh, consume uh, in one place. So that is why uh, even as we say that all the we see all the growth of e-commerce during the past few years, the majority of the uh, of the fresh food uh, purchase is still, uh, conducted in the real world, in the in the in the traditional market, in the in the in the supermarket, uh, it's because uh, the one-stop shopping is uh, a big value for a fresh fruit uh, uh, purchase. And the third character of uh, when shopping for fresh fruit is a very intensive information demand, meaning when you look at the fresh fruit you uh, consumers have a lot of questions that need to be answered. Uh, for example, how to pick uh, the fruit, how to pick the fish, uh, how can I cook with that? How, when I eat this, anything I need to notice or need to know? Also, how can I trust you uh, that this uh, food is safe and also fresh? A lot of, a lot of questions. So um, when consumers shop for this uh, part, uh, shop for uh, fresh food in uh, a traditional market or supermarket, there are a lot of information uh, on the shelf or provided by the vendors to answer all these questions. So this is uh, a one thing that we, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the distribution, distribution channels, we need to notice that uh, uh, fresh food shopping require a lot of information and this information needs to be provided on the spot of purchase. Okay, so let's go on to the review of the evolution uh, uh, path of uh, uh, distribution channel of fresh food. Uh, in the beginning, uh, we will see that uh, fresh food are, are provided through a traditional distribution channel. So I believe that all these uh, traditional uh, store vendors or the mar traditional markets are uh, similar in Taiwan, also in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Malaysia, in Japan, it's similar. You will have an auction market for wholesale and then uh, all the vendors or the retailers go to the auction market to buy wholesale and then 
uh, repackage or uh, 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 repackage it for uh, a retail. So in this uh, traditional distribution system of uh, all the fresh food, consumer can see the real thing. Consumer can do one-stop one shopping in the traditional market. And also uh, with the vendors, uh, consumers are bonded with uh, those vendors because uh, the vendors serve the neighborhood and then uh, almost on a regular basis. So there are trust uh, among vendors and also uh, consumers. And do a uh, consumer trust the vendor to provide them the information they need when they pick, when they cook, when they consume all this uh, product. So you can see that the traditional um, distribution system is actually uh, running very efficiently already. But uh, but then uh, as as for the uh, for, as uh, the the society changes and all the urbanization uh, process happen all the uh, population, most of the population goes to the big cities. So uh, we will see that the traditional uh, distribution system uh, also evolved into a modern chain store. Uh, so uh, people in the big cities, they go to, rather than going to the traditional uh, vendors, they go to the chain store, supermarket to buy fresh food. So because of that change, the supply chain of that fresh food uh, for chain store need to uh, change as well. So you will see the modern chain store, they have their own warehouse, they have their own staff to do all the packaging because this packaging need to be uh, put on shelf and also all the information need to be put on the package, also the shelf. So in the these modern chain stores, Consumer also can see the real thing, the real product. They still can do the one-time shopping, and also consumers trust the brand name of the of the chain store, the supermarket, and also uh, they trust the brand name of the farmer or the uh, the company name, a brand show on the uh, on the package, and then. We move on to, at this point, we will see that e-commerce e in the fresh food uh, uh, a channel is, de uh, is uh, uh, developing. Um, so we see that the e-commerce is a little bit different from what we see in the uh, traditional uh, market, also in uh, supermarkets. It's different. How different? First, um, consumers cannot see the real thing no longer because consumers can only see pictures on the website. So the picking of the the picking and choosing of the food uh, is not done by consumers, but done by the staff of the e-commerce website. So uh, you will see that on the top, they say, I say food basket. It's because consumers don't go to the supermarket or traditional market anymore. When they order uh, via website e-commerce, they receive a food basket like this. It contains all the product they need uh, during a week or so. So all the food basket, the, the, the products are picked by the, the website, the, the, the e-commerce store staff. Uh, this staff, uh, you will see the picture on the left part you see the staff is picking up all the items that consumer order. And then you will see that the staff is uh, wearing heavy coats and heavy uh, hat um, because uh, in, uh, in, in the, their working environment, the storage is very, this is a cooling uh, warehouse because they, they want to keep this uh, uh, fresh food uh, fresh. So uh, the temperature is low, so they need a very heavy coat. And then this temperature is actually uh, keep in about two zero to two uh, degrees Celsius. Um, Celsius. And then and, and then this temperature is, is good for keep the item fresh, but it's not good for people to operate under that uh, temperature. So um, the the store staff cannot do the operation for a long hour, and then a lot of mistake happens. Uh, because of the temperature, the, the, the working environment. So um, 
we we think that um, the um, the 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 picking the warehouse the operation uh, is more uh, ideal for machine to do that rather than uh, uh, human to do that. So, but in order to develop a, a a machine identifiable package, we 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 suggest that for the uh, uh, for develop a supply chain of the agri food, also the food package. Uh, we in the e-commerce area, we need the package to be readable or to be identifiable, to be seen by machine, not by human. Uh, because in in the future, we think that the uh, the picking service need to be done by uh, certain computers or uh, robots. And also, uh, that that's one area that we need to work on. And the second area is the, here that we, I say that uh, uh, in agri food e-commerce, uh, consumer cannot see the real thing; they can only see pictures. And this is certainly one area that uh, e-commerce uh, operators need to uh, notice. They need to uh, find a way uh, to show the real thing uh, on website for consumer to see. And that that is uh, one thing that you can uh, increase consumers' trust on you. And also, uh, the one-stop shopping is not uh, sufficient uh, currently because all the uh, fresh food uh, e-commerce stores are still very young. So they their items, their sourcing power is uh, relatively small compared with uh, uh, other supermarkets or hypermarket uh, competitors. So that's why you will see that in uh, you you see that in the U.S. Uh, people still go to a uh, Target, to go to Costco, to go go to Walmart, their online store, to buy fresh food rather than go to Amazon, and that that is something to do with uh, all the items they carry. Okay, this this chart is just a summary of all the uh, what we see uh, currently on the market or the uh, uh, agri food business, uh, e commerce business model. Okay. So, uh, to summary, uh, we think that currently uh, there are three inadequacies for the agri food e commerce to go further to develop in the future. Uh, These three uh, inadequacy or the area to develop is uh, one, to see the real thing, and two, one stop shopping, and three, we need a better warehouse solution. So, this is, uh, let's go to the next uh, implications and suggestions are uh, focused on these three things. So uh, the the first uh, shortage or the first uh, inadequacies for uh, e-commerce of fresh food online uh, right now is to not, uh, is to see the real thing. Consumers cannot do that now. So a certain application of live streaming or interactive uh technologies or broadcasting is uh need is very needed in um in 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 uh the e-commerce uh for fresh food now i cannot show the consumer pictures only and so that's why we suggest that a certain version an uh, online version of farmers market is needed uh, uh for now uh, that is that we uh, uh, we can move or we can put all these uh, farmers stores, uh, farmers markets online to do live stream of the market or to allow the uh, farmers to broadcast or live stream uh, on the uh, on their field to to show the consumer the real thing and also uh, to provide them all the uh, product they need uh, uh, in one place. And then uh, uh, we also suggest that uh, the the supply the supply uh, for um, uh, the supply chain the remodification of uh, uh, supply chain for the agri food e commerce. So we put we we think that a certain uh, warehouse uh, was or task. Uh, WA is, stands for warehouse as a service. 
or TAS stand for transportation as a service, a certain um, uh, supply chain uh, for the uh, fresh food, uh, fresh food that is suitable for e-commerce is needed. So that that we that we I mean that the clean of the fresh food, the classification, the packaging, uh, to do the pickup service, also the boxing, and also to the two door transportation. All these three functions need to be built and to provide as a, a service for farmers uh, around the world. And that is uh, a, a a kind of infrastructure for uh, agri food e commerce to develop. Okay, that uh, is all my presentation today. And thank you for your listening. This is my uh, contact information. If, if you have any further questions, you can uh, write me an email. We'll see you, uh, hope to see you in the future again. Thank you.